Greetings, you sleazy better future salesman, and welcome back to TerraTech with me, Lathrex, and of course, welcome to the episode where we're finally going to start doing some base building. That is my one and only goal for today, getting all the basics done over at our fortress. Things like a little bit of basic defense, sorting out our fabrication, scrapping, all the different plans finally coming together. We have so much to do, and honestly, I feel like it's going to take a very long time. Now, if we have some spare time at the end, I do want to finally complete this craft, but it all depends on just how long everything else takes. So far, we've been making a lot of progress, and once all these basics are done with our fortress, things are going to happen even faster. Being able to fabricate our weapons and our armor and everything else, which will be cheaper than buying it from scratch, will really, really speed us up. But first, there's going to be a lot of planning and a lot of basic building, two things which I am notoriously not the best at. Before any of that though, what we need to do is sort out a few missions first. Things like Hawkeye and things like Geocorp. There's lots of weapons I want from Hawkeye still, and Geocorp I need the parts for the aircraft, in addition to just more money so we can start building the base. And if we get some really good drops from Hawkeye, we might not need to do it all that much. Either way though, this episode's probably going to be a very heavily edited like the first few episodes, because there is just so, so much to do, lots of which we have done before, so into the missions we go. Then the building. Then, who knows? Chaos. The very first mission is a classic, Rook Creek Bridge. So this fella here isn't allowing us to pass unless we pay, but of course we can just destroy him. Now, the easy way to do this is to just knock him off the bridge. It will kill him, but most of his blocks get destroyed if you do that. So what I'm doing is pulsing my attack, so hopefully most of the stuff survived. Yet look at all of those cannons. That's what I wanted. The Hawkeye Battleship Cannon. Which are absurdly strong and decently ranged. Beautiful. And of course we also got a nice chest from that. So that was a very productive few seconds there. But yeah, you can just knock him off. Not everything gets destroyed, but a lot of it does. Obviously that's not what we wanted, because we want everything he dropped. Ooh, even an auto cannon, which is good, because I've actually lost most of mine in the last few episodes. Good. Now we continue missions, really focusing on it, on any missions that'll let us fight multiple techs. Really should have put the SCU down first, or just put the SCU on our craft. I will do that, by the way, but in the finished version, because these things are heavy. Hey everyone, Future Lathrix here. As is becoming a tradition with these TerraTech videos, just here to say a huge thank you first off. It turns out that in the last video, we managed to hit 10,000 likes in the first two days, which is honestly mind-blowing. I mentioned in the video before, we hit 10,000 in the first week, and apparently everyone took that as a challenge. So thank you so, so much. It is truly heartwarming to see all the positivity around the series. Just utterly lovely. Now, I'm also here just to say that, yes, once again, this video is very heavily edited down from what my usual videos would be like, so a lot of it is cut because I need to do lots of missions and lots of building and everything else, and that's probably going to stay that way for a few episodes at least, just as we keep on doing all the basic stuff. Stuff we've seen from all the other playthroughs. Either way though, I really do hope you enjoy, and I am just having so much fun with the series. Thank you for watching. And now, back to the past, with Lathrix destroying things. And you know, if you want to like and comment on this video, it would certainly help out a lot. Suddenly really glad we just got some proper Hawkeye shields from that last fight, because missiles really hurt. And the enemies have no qualms in using lots of them. As long as we get them facing the enemy, most of their shots are just going to take away from our power. Whoa, yep, our power reserves are going down a lot faster than usual, though. Still need strafe controls. There's always one. There we go. Awesome job, enemy clear. So that's two Hawkeye missions finished at one. Oh, never mind. Now have I completed two missions? Ow. Can things stop landing on my head? Just for once. So we got two of the scrappers. So that's pretty nice. In addition to that, we got the thing I completely forgot existed, the quad rail gun. We've got two of those. We've got the Hawkeye SCU. We've got the naval gun, which is just one of the other guns with an actual arc of fire. Well, it's on a turret, so I should say. 
Hawkeye landing gear. Wow, we have got pretty much everything I wanted. Oh, I also forgot about those missiles. I made a weird noise. Missiles just make me happy. Well, that gave me almost everything I wanted in one very easy mission. The game is being kind today, which is making me very suspicious. Okay, I think we should probably then just do a few more Geocorp missions so I can get some of the stuff without having to buy it, and then go and start the base. There's not much else I really want to do. The scrapping section, I want to be made out of Geocorp stuff anyway. Uh, the fortress itself is going to be mostly Hawkeye, but that's going to come later, and the landing strip is probably going to be a mix of everything, so we don't really need all the Hawkeye fortress stuff yet, and honestly, we're going to need so much of this, we need the payload terminal. So that's going to be when we finish off Hawkeye, so probably next episode. Okay, so I'm just going to go off and do some more Geocorp stuff. Can't wait to start building the base. <laughs> really excited, actually. Sadly, you can't hurt the cubes to start the event, but apparently putting these cannons on a flying craft suddenly is very deadly. Look at the range on that thing. Yeah, I just added some more of the guns, um, added the cannons all to the front of this craft, so our DPS is now insanely high, so we can defeat the cube, and I'm just waiting until daytime so we can actually see what we're doing. I also had to add some extra fans to the front, because turns out battleship cannons, pretty insanely heavy. You could cheese a lot of missions with this range. Having a nice chat with the Supreme Leader once again. The Almighty Cube is back and its blocks are bigger than ever. Twice as indestructible. Of course at this point we're in a flying craft with cannons, it was before we had just little kinetic weapons, but still, you know. Fair. Oh, I underestimated these cannons a little bit. Well, that didn't take all that long, did it? These punks I talked to on the phone said this time would be truly indestructible. I'll make sure you pay for the blocks you destroyed today. Oh, do most of them just leave this time? Only the real minions stayed to fight. Ah, so yeah, here's the problem with the cannons. Although they are amazing, they can't really aim, so I can't fire down with them. Thankfully, I do have six of those auto cannons, so we're pretty alright. We have explosives for very difficult opponents, and auto cannons for everything else. I think that'll probably be the end armament for this thing. By Almighty Cube, what do we get for this? We get eight parts and ten thousand block bucks. Lovely. Now, as for other combat vehicles, one vehicle I really want is a ow. Is a laser-themed Hawkeye tank or something. Because as much as flying is fun, it can be a bit cheesy sometimes. All the time in this game. So I would like several ground vehicles as well. This will just likely be our capital ship. A non-trapped delivery crate. Lovely. Home sweet home. So before we finish this craft, I think we need to make some money. So let's do all that stuff first. This is where the main fortress is going to be, along with our landing strip and everything else. So which one of these pillars is going to have our scrapper? So eventually I'm going to make a bridge to bridge this section here. So this bit doesn't necessarily need to be completely unblocked. So I'm thinking scrappers in this circle here, some conveyors going along, so I think that'll look really cool. And then over here have the fabrication section and then a little mini bit here for selling stuff. So the idea is if we want to sell stuff, we just flick a switch over here, one of the filters, which then allows it all to go straight to the cannons. Otherwise it'll go through and then be collected or perhaps be collected then the selling i don't really know just yet but we'll see as we create the thing so let's begin so this little corner is quickly done so we have the four scrappers we have currently eventually we'll also have reticule research and the better future scrappers so those two need to go in here as well 
but here's just the four for now, so I can move them around as I want to. I've also made this little corner because, honestly, I can see myself falling off here. I can also see all the items constantly falling off because the scrappers hold them above themselves. Eventually, I'll probably even build another layer a little bit higher up because, again, everything's going to get stuck. Outside here, because loads of little enemies kept on attacking us, I've just put down a simple AI module with a tiny little missile attached to it. In fact, we probably need to make something like this. Just a really simple turret I can manufacture hundreds of to put in all the little weird corners where things can get stuck. I think the little Hawkeye uh, missile pods are probably the best thing for this. I mean, they're tiny, they're relatively cheap to make once you start making them slash buying them, and that's it. I mean, we could just plop them like this. They'll be out of range of almost every enemy, so... You know... Yeah. So for a while, I will be keeping lighting to a fair minimum, just because lighting can cause a fair bit of lag. So until I've put down everything else, so I know just how bad this base will be to run, then I'll start putting down some more permanent lighting. For now, just enough so we can see what we're doing. I actually quite like how this corner looks. Hopefully I don't need to, be, to build bigger walls here, but we very well may need to. It's at this moment Lathrix realizes there's a build size limit. Okay, that's easy enough. All we need to do is use droppers in order to move it from one tech to the next. If we have a dropper here, then a collector right here, it won't even be able to get to the ground, it'll simply drop off and then continue down the conveyor. That's fine. In which case, I don't really want this shape anymore, so all that work, no! You also can't anchor things on here. Fine, it looks like my plans to have things going around the rocks aren't quite as, uh, feasible as I originally wanted. That's fine, that's fine. So what I'm going to do instead, then, is have something similar. Rather than up there, we'll go down here, drop off all the stuff in a section here, and a little basket just hanging off the side. That gets collected and goes round this, because that I can anchor several places, and then that can be brought through over here, I think either through this hole here or a little bit further if we can make it. If not, then it'll still look interesting. I just want it to look interesting, that's all. The question is, do I need a basket here to make sure things don't fall into the abyss? Also, I don't even ask how I got this tech here. It kind of just glitched out into the rock. I think it'll be okay, as long as the pacemaker's not set to rapid. But even then, it shouldn't be a problem because they'll be moved faster as well. I kind of like that. You know what? I like it being open like that because it looks dangerous and stupid, and that's something I really appreciate. So now I need this to go up again, then through that hole there. Then I need to build a fence here along this walkway. And by the way, you can't anchor text properly on the bridge either. You can just about get it in some spots, but not everywhere. This base will be fighting me the entire time. But I intend to win. Sometimes things look like they shouldn't work, they just do. Now, there is a much smoother way of doing this, I've done it countless times, but I kind of like the fact it just kind of flips off like that. Okay, so, scrapping section is going to be down here on this little blob, and then the factory and storage area will be on the next one, so let's try and make a tiny little scrapping section over here. Yes, I've had to build yet another tech because of the size limit. So this conveyor just moves it around the rock. Then there's going to be a pickup point here and a dropper, which then will split into either the scrapping section or moving it over to storage, which will be this entire block over there. Now, I don't know if I've got enough stuff for storage. I'm hoping I do, because that would be really cool to finish this thing off. Maybe I just need to make some more filters. I mean, we are making a factory after all, so we should be able to make some of the basic stuff at least over here. Okay, this is just a really awkward spot. I'm going to have to defend the outside instead, just to stop things getting into this little crevice. Because that is really annoying. I wanted to wait until I hooked up all the electricity first before putting down any defences here, but the amount of enemies getting stuck in this place, while not necessarily spawning here, but just running in here, is getting a bit silly. So I'm just going to build a wall. Essentially, I'm just going to go with GSO and just plop down a wall over here with some fixed anchors and stuff, and then just pop some basic weaponry on the top and some solar panels. But this will all be replaced eventually because I want proper pylons moving power around from our geothermal generators. This is just to stop the bad things. That should work. Now the issue is, as you can see here, 
if they sense an enemy is nearby, even if they obviously can't attack it, they will start just spam attacking. So, a little bit irritating. But if it means I don't end up losing all the progress of my building, that's absolutely fine. And we can go and deal with that single enemy for a second. Now, there is the chance that things will spawn down in the ravine even here. I haven't seen that happen yet. But if they do, I will just put down a basic turret there as well. I'm not sure what the rules are with how close things can spawn near one of your techs. It seems like there is a bit of a defensive bubble around it. So I'm hoping that won't happen as I build here anyway. But just in case, I'll put down something very simple as I continue. Now, storage. A lot of this looks really precarious, but so far I've tested this over 50 times now, and every single time it does catch it. Okay, good. Now, the problem with storage, really, is just the sheer amount of different blocks that are in this game. There's resource blocks. So there's the refined versions, then there's the unrefined versions for everything, and there's a lot of them. If we just put down a filter quickly... And look at the normal blocks. Yep, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we need 22 storage silos. That's pretty bad. Now, for the different um, components, that I'm just going to have as one storage. It's just going to allow all components because I'm not going to be that mad and have all of those. So I guess I'm probably going to do is just... Have it so... Okay, yeah, you, you shouldn't be connected to that. I can fix that in a moment. Have it so we have both lines next to each other like this. And just have them facing each other. Naturally, I chose the one... Okay. I need to remake this. Every time I press undo, it changes how it's done. That's so weird. I just pressed undo again... I don't know what's going on anymore. Okay, well, you're connected to the ground now, at least. I thought they all were connected to the ground. Apparently, they weren't. So, I didn't have to remake it because I pressed undo again after messing things up again. And now... Oh, they're in the wall. That is a problem, isn't it? Okay. Let's put down a few filters and put down a, lar a large amount of hard points so this won't happen again. I'm confused as to why this didn't completely mess me up, but I'm uh, okay, because it didn't completely mess me up. Okay, all out of the stone. I mean, this is just a mini, mini, mini version of what we're basically doing here. So, I'm scrapping some of these lasers, which I've just never used, because they contain some of the yellow crystals, which I need for the filters. So, I'm just going to scrap absolutely loads of them. Then, I'm going to scrap loads of things containing any of the fibron chunks, essentially the wood blocks. It doesn't matter if they are the refined versions or not, because I have a refinery in the system. And then, I'm just going to make loads and loads of the filters. Any of the excess, I'll just sell off afterwards. I've just realised something. I didn't need to do all this. So, the raw resource for being stored is only important if I'm going to be depositing raw resource into the system, obviously. Most blocks, outside of a few of the really basic ones, are never used in a recipe in their raw forms. I think it's only, like, the first four, which are. But... I like the fact it looks symmetrical, so I'm going to pretend that I didn't know that and just continue anyway. But I remember making this mistake a long time ago. I don't think a lot of that is actually needed. But it's not taking up all that much space anyway, and I was going to have to do the same things on this side anyway, regardless. So, And I've already made all of the sodding filters. So, you know, if I've made all the filters, that's what we're going with. Okay, here's a question. Do I need... Okay, say so I want that. So I'm asking for that. These two are now connected. Okay, good. So I don't need anything but a conveyor to connect this to this. Okay, so I thought I might need the filters there as well. In which case, I have really made too many filters. But filters are used in every step of this game, so I'll need them at some point. That's good, though, because all that means is now I just need to run conveyors on both sides of this. And then I can have the fabricator in this corner. Like, all four of the fabricators. Or I could have the fabricators on the other side if I want to run all these conveyors again. You know, as much as I like them, no. <laughs> I don't want to have to do all that again. 
Oh, I could have the fabricators here. Remember, the whole point of this base is that I, do, I want it to be accessible to a small tech I'm going to build soon, which will only have one purpose, which is to move around the base. Then, in terms of defense, I want lots of floating turrets, so we need more better future stuff. That's why I'm not going really heavy into turrets right now, because I want floating turrets like this everywhere, but we need a lot more stuff to make this happen, like more sky anchors and everything else. I just want all the basics done now, so anytime we need something, we can always return home and just make it, which is a big deal. Now, as for the fabricators, I don't have many of these yet, do I? The dongles? No. Okay, I need to do a lot more GSO stuff, but at least now we can make the basic stuff, which is good, because what I need is loads of these two blocks. Loads of those two blocks, and in terms of Geocorp, I need loads of these bumpers. Now, the bumpers I can just buy, but I can't currently buy stuff from GSO. And I want to be able to fabricate if I want to fabricate. I think it's cheaper in terms of resource overall to fabricate stuff. It's just more more complex. That's all. Hence the weird structure I've built here. Excellent. Okay, that looks really cool, actually. Now I'm really happy I've got this along there. That looks really nice looking through the, almost like the windows for that section. Oh god, with the pacemaker on it looks even worse. But so far, not one resource has actually dropped. I kind of want to just build a basket underneath for my own sanity, but I don't think I need it, really. I've also set up stuff for the components and an overflow, essentially, if all of these are full, simply scrap the stuff. I don't really want to store more than one of these lots of silos worth of anything. Okay, I'm going to scrap a few more things, just so this will look a little bit prettier. And then, we will start selling stuff, which I also had to fix, because I realised I didn't have anywhere for the components to go. So that's fixed as well now as well, as well, as well, as well, as well, as well. I forgot to turn on this. Wow. Our first proper mistake of the new build. It's very pretty, though. I don't think I want the fabricators here, it seems a bit cluttered with all the storage there as well, but at least we have it all connected. So if we wanted to now, we could start making some of the stuff, but of course we have a problem. We don't have a component factory attached to this. We also don't have a refinery, but I kind of want to keep it that way so we have the raw resources there and not constantly being used for everything else if I do want to make some of the more basic stuff for GSO, for instance. So the component factories are... Something I literally don't have yet. So I think that'll be the next part of crafty business. That's when all the dongle stuff comes into play. That enables us to make the more complex components, which then allows us to make, you know, all the expensive stuff for each of these. So right now, I can only make the very, very basics. Now, I can make lots of them if I want to, but that's all I can make. So I need to do some more GSO stuff in order to get that. So... That's actually what I'm going to do. The original plan was to finish off the aircraft, but honestly, this has taken way longer than I expected, and I don't want to rush that design, because it is something I want to keep permanently. So, for the rest of the episode, it's going to be loads of GSO missions in order to get all the dongles together and to get the fabricator, sorry, the component factories. That way, all of the basics are then complete. One mission done. Ow. Every single time it hits me. Well, that's unexpected. We've now finished off our Hawkeye license, and because of that, we can now buy any Hawkeye item we want. Which is good for the weapons especially, but it also means we can start buying all of the fort stuff. Getting all the licenses done. Ow! I just picked up the mission for In Search of Science. This will unlock Rescue Research, which will give us the windows we want for our base, which is like the last thing. Not going to do that now, because once again, what we're after right now is just the fabricator stuff. Now, thankfully, I actually managed to get one of the component factories. So we've got one piece of everything. Still in the dongles. I haven't seen the craftier business pop up yet, which should give us this. And I have a horrible feeling like I may have missed it in the past. I guess we'll see. Of course, I could just fabricate the other dongles. There we go. One advanced. What do we have currently? We have the c the complex. So what else is there then? 
So advanced, complex, and the last one we need the full level four. That's fantastic. Okay, let's settle this up. Oof, this is going to look really stupid for a while. But again, all we need is all of the basic stuff set up so then we can make the other stuff so then we can make it look a bit better. It's a never-ending cycle of improvement. Thankfully, it looks like I had most of the stuff already. Here looks like most of the components we already had. Oh yeah, there is still that issue, isn't there? Sometimes they'll just overshoot. Now, I have fixed this in the past, and I know there's a way to work around this, because it's just the game being a bit silly if you place things in certain ways. Not really the game's fault per se, but still. So what I'm going to do is, just for now, create a loop. So anything which gets called to our... Uh, Really, I'm out of conveyors? Now, sadly, we do need the more advanced component factory to get all of the things we want. Like I was saying before, it is overall cheaper to simply craft the stuff than buy them from scratch. You're essentially paying a fee to not have to go through this stage. But now we have this built, we can make things a lot cheaper with the components we constantly scrap from all the enemies we destroy. And once again, my rule is for this series, the only rule I'm putting on myself is just I can't sit and harvest from the environment, putting down the miners and everything else. It's way too easy and way too quick, and honestly, it takes a lot of the fun out of the game for me, because there's just less point in doing all the different missions and building different craft to do all those different missions more and more efficiently. I really do hope you've enjoyed today's video. It may be a little bit shorter than the first two, purely because it took a long time to do this base. A lot of the time, things just didn't work out as I wanted them to. It was really difficult to place the items and get myself in the position to place them. It took hours upon hours to get all of this stuff just working. Now it's all here, it's going to be a lot easier. Building the walls, building the defences, so much easier than doing all this conveyor stuff. So next time, once we do start doing more base stuff, it'll be a lot faster. And of course, we'll be focusing more on our tech in the next episode, only with the component factory really having a side quest for us. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that TerraTech is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Again, thank you so much to all of the positivity towards the series. It has been heartwarming for a channel which has been pretty stagnant for a few years because I like to do things in my own way. It is nice to see people still enjoy the games, which I really, really, truly love. Thank you for watching. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.